I wanted to, but I couldn't. I have lots of sketches of things. I know, and I miss it very much, because there's nothing in the... Do you compose? No, I'm afraid not. No. There's nothing in the world more thrilling, or practically nothing. It's, it, but, you, but you can't do it, and at least I can't. Maybe that's where a woman's different. I can't do it. And this, it's the first thing I think of every morning when I wake, and the last thing I think of every night before I go to sleep, and I have it in my mind all the time. And if one allows too many other things to take over, one's liable not to be able to do it. That's been my experience. I think you do hear the wistfulness of her voice that she's, you know, that she wished that she had written more, but just found it too hard for whatever reasons to get the momentum to be able to do that. The piano trio that we'll hear tonight has this very dissonant opening motive, and it's like the harshest thing she ever wrote with these interlocking tritones in the strings and uh, the seventh in the piano. And some commentators have said this is her reaction to the trauma of World War I and the destruction of World War I. Um, and there's a very good article by Bryony Jones in the book that I edited, uh, Rebecca Clark Reader, that, that is an analysis. I mean, the piano trio is, is in sonata form. You'll hear classical sonata form. Um, but all kinds of 20th century vocabulary of you know, octatonic scales and pentatonic scales and um, these interesting dissonances. Um, this article by Bryony Jones in this book, it's available on Google Books. The whole, almost the whole book you can get on Google Books if you Google you know, Rebecca Clark, if the book comes up and, and you can find that article. Um, so I'll just play a little bit of this initial moment. And there's so much motivic development that she is using um, in, in you know, mo motives growing out of each other, um, this repeated note idea that's used in all kinds of slightly different permutations. So it's very, very tightly knit kind of organic use of, uh, of these traditional forms. <laughs> So that is um, Moderato Ma Appassionata. The second movement is Andante Moto Semplice. And um, the middle section of the second movement has this, um, it goes into this dreamy passage that's just so atmospheric. And she creates this, uh, this kind of undulating atmosphere, having a lot of uh, rhythm of two against three and three against four kind of thing. And I wanted to play a little bit of a song where she does that same thing. And she wrote more than 50 songs. Um, some of which are very well known, but just to, I think there is a connection between the song that we'll hear and then a little passage from the second movement. Yeah. 
smallest taste of the piano trio and the music that we'll hear um, at the concert tonight. And the, you know, and then the third movement is very broad in conception and brings back themes from the first movement and ties everything together. Um, so, so Clark's life, um, she wrote nearly a hundred pieces of music, and only twenty of them were published in her lifetime. And um, so we're still engaging in the process of discovery. So I think when when you consider um, the life of a woman like this, we can spend a lot of energy wondering why she didn't compose more and looking at the obstacles we face. But I think it's also very important to make sure that we focus on the music and what she composed and to start celebrating that and listening to that. And I think that's what's going on with this concert tonight. So thank you very much.